My top 10 tips in changing bearings for your induction motor. Let's go! Hello there, if you are new here, my name is Mark. I am your average electrotechnical officer. If you are into seafaring, electrical, or weird stuffs, Welcome because I sometimes upload videos to this channel, sharing to you on what it's like to be on board a vessel. Enough with the talk, let us get to the main topic. Electric motors. Since it was first invented, it revolutionized the world of engineering rapidly. Like any other equipment, electric motors too are subject to maintenance to continue to perform to its maximum efficiency. And one of these maintenances is bearing renewal. Bearing renewal is one of the most common maintenance ETOs do on board. This is best done by periodic or preventive maintenance to avoid breakdown of motors. In this video, I'm going to show you my top 10 tips in changing bearings for induction motor to help you and the ATOs next to you. Let us start with tip number 1 which is safety first. As the saying goes, safety first. Since we are dealing with electricity, and electricity is deadly when handled incorrectly, the way we can prevent this from happening is wearing your PPE and through isolation. Not only it will protect you and the other crews, but also for the equipment. Isolate the power of the motor with your lockout tagout, close the valves or flaps if needed, and in some cases the area you are working on. Tip number two is to make sure you have the bearings in stock to replace. This should be the first tip but there are cases where the nameplate of the motor is beyond recognizable, covered in paint or missing. Also, some makers do not put their bearing specifications on their nameplate. So you have to take apart the rotor first to see the actual bearings used for the motor. Imagine you are about to install the new bearings and you find out that you don't have the spare bearings. Then all your effort will come to nothing. Tip number 3 is to deassemble and assemble your motor the way it used to be. And the best way you can achieve this is through markings and get organized. You do not want your motor to rotate the wrong way after assembling or have extra screws and lock rings after assembling. You can use a paint marker or puncher for markings and small containers for the small parts. Moving on to tip number 4 which is to ask help. They say that two heads are better than one. There are times that you just needed help, especially in dealing with larger motors. If you force yourself to do it alone even when you are struggling, then you might end up damaging the equipment or worse cause accidents. Which bring us to tip number 1 which is safety first. So ask help if you must. Most of the times your crew is much more willing to help you. Tip number 5. When installing the bearings, make sure the label specification should face outwards. Like what I mentioned in tip number 2, when the motor nameplate is badly corroded or missing, you have no choice but to look inside the motor for bearing specifications. If it is facing inwards, then you have no choice but to take out the bearing and pray that you have the spare bearings in your inventory. It may not matter to you, but this matters most to the future ETOs next to you. Tip number 6 is use temperature to your advantage. Metals expand when heated and shrinks when frozen. We knew that during our school days. What we can do is heat up the bearing and freeze the shaft of the motor to make the job easy. But be careful not to overheat your bearings. Bearings has its grease lubricant inside its shell and it will melt if heated above 100 degrees Celsius. Tip number 7 is ready your bearing press kit. What I have here is an improvised bearing press kit. 
using different sizes of pipes. Here on the screen is the actual bearing press kit. It comes in different diameter depending on the size of the shaft or bearings. What it does is to push the bearings just right in the inner ring or inner race to avoid damage of the bearings. Tip number 8 is dispose your old bearings. Do not put it back in your inventory or store somewhere else just in case you might use it in the future. Almost every ship, I always have this problem not only for bearings but for other spare parts as well. Bearings are not meant to be used again after overhaul. If you want to use it for other purposes, make a clear label that the bearing is used and store it away from your new bearings. Tip number 9 is to test your motor. You want your motor to be in perfect and ready to use condition in case of emergency. By testing it or putting it in operation, you can assure that the motor is functioning 100% or find out sooner that there are some issues with your equipment. You do not want to do overhauling again when the time the equipment is in need of use. And my last tip is to update your inventory and make requisition. This habit is good for you and the next ETO to have not a hard time. I know I don't want to do my inventory. It is a very long and mind-draining process. It could take days or even weeks to complete. It helps a lot for the next ETO if you have your inventory updated all the time. Also, make requisition every time you take something from your spare parts. It is best to have your spare parts ready for those emergency situations. So those are my top 10 tips in replacing your motor bearings. I hope you learned something from this video and make you a better ETO. If you did, then you know the drill. Hit like, subscribe, and share. If you have any tips I did not mention, please share down below. Thanks and see you in the next video.